Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in Physical Science. In this lesson, we're going to carry on working on our Physical Science and we're going to be looking at revision, obviously, of physics because you guys are going to be doing your physics exam tomorrow. Hey, so let's get started. It says a satellite of mass 650 kilograms is in orbit around the Earth. So yeah, here is the Earth, very badly drawn, and here is your satellite. Okay, it has has a mass of 650 kilograms. The Earth exerts a force of 6,346,07 newtons on the satellite. Calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. So we want R. Okay, so let's go look at our formula sheet and see what information they gave us because what we really need is things like the mass of the earth and um wondering if we really need it and a second we've got the gravitational constant obviously so we've got f is equal to big g mass of the earth mass of the satellite over r squared do you agree? We also have that um, F equals mg, where this would be the mass of the satellite, but that's actually within, I'm wondering if they're not expecting you to know the mass of the Earth. Um, it's not on your formula sheet and they don't give you the, the radius of the Earth either. Okay, I think that we're missing information because you actually do need the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth to complete this question. So we will skip this question and move on. Okay, good. Next, move on. It says the graph below shows the position time relationship of two stones A and B. Okay, so here is the position versus time of A and here is the position versus time of B. So do you see that A, before we even start anything else, we're seeing that A actually was thrown first. Okay, it starts off at time t equals zero, whereas B is, something's happening with B, but it only starts at time t. Um, okay, it says stone A is thrown vertically upwards, that's why it goes up first, at 19 meters per second and strikes the ground after four seconds. Stone B is dropped. Okay, so I know this is a displacement versus time graph, but I'm just going to fill in here for myself that this is initial velocity is 19 meters per second up, okay? Whereas, yeah, the initial velocity is zero, just to help me see what's going on. Strikes the ground at the same time, but you'll notice that it's dropped T seconds later. So do you agree that the time it took is actually four minus T seconds? That is the time it took to drop. It says express in, in terms of T the time taken. Oh, I've just done it. So it's four <laughs> minus T seconds. Now it says determine the numerical value of T. Okay, so let's think about this. We know that Okay, let's think about this. We know that the initial velocity, this is for ball B, okay, is zero. We're going to choose, um, let's choose downwards as positive, okay. So then the acceleration is going to be 9,8 meters. Oh. 8 meters per second. The time taken is 4 minus t. Okay. And we don't have the final velocity and we don't have delta x. Okay. Then we've got stone A. Stone A has an initial velocity of um, negative 19 meters per second. Its final velocity, we don't know. The acceleration is 9,8. Its time is 4 seconds. Do you agree that they both dropped from the top of the same building? So the x values for these graphs are the same. x of b has to equal x of a. So let's get an equation that works for both of that. So let's do x equation for B, so we could use 
um, which doesn't have VF in it. So to be delta X is equal to, with B in mind, B, it would be VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared, but initial velocity is zero. So do you agree that the delta X here is going to be a half times 9, 8, and the time in this case is 4 minus T squared. Okay, that's the delta X for B. Now, the delta X for A is going to be VIT. So it's going to be VI, which is minus 19, multiplied by the time, which is 4, plus a half times 9 comma 8 times by 4 squared. So do you agree we could work out the delta X now? Okay, so we've got the VI, we've got the G, we've got the delta T, so we can pop that in. So let's get our calculator out and switch it on and let's put this in it. So we've got negative 19 multiplied by 4 equals plus bracket 4.9 times 16, I never had a bracket, equals 2.4 meters. So this height here is 2.4 meters. Now that we've got that, we can use that and substitute into this and get T. I'm just going to erase all this so that I've got space to write. So if we do that, we can say that we've got 2,4 meters is equal to 4,9 times by 4 minus t squared. So therefore, we can um, divide both sides by 4.9. So we've got 2,4 over 4,9 is going to be 16 minus 8 t plus t squared. So if we get out a calculator, we got 2.4 divided by 4.9 equals 0, 0,48, um, 0.49. So we've got 0, 0,49 is equal to 16 minus 8 t plus t squared. So, do you agree we can say that we've got t squared minus 8t minus 15 comma 51. Sorry, I'm just checking that I've done this right. Um, okay. So, Let's carry on. Um, so if we carry on, we now have to use the formula. So we go T is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that's going to be minus, it's 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times by 1 times by minus 15 comma 5 1 all over 2. Okay, so now we can pop that into our calculator and let's do the bracket first. So, I mean this, the third first, it's going to be 64 plus um, bracket 4 times 15.51 15.51 close bracket equals 11.22 let's add 8 and divide by 2 and that's 9.61 
So T is equal to 9 comma 6 1. Okay, that is not possible. Okay, let's start again. Erase all back. Okay, it says that the initial velocity of this is 19 meters per second upwards, and the initial velocity here is zero. Okay. We have that this time here is 4 minus t. They don't tell you how high the building is. Um, we know that for building for the b, the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity, we don't know. The acceleration we're going to go is 9.8. We're going to choose downwards as positive. And the delta t is 4 minus t, or 4 minus t. For a, our initial velocity is negative 19. Our acceleration is 9,8. Our total time is 4 seconds. And we don't have the final velocity. So again, for A, you can say delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared, which is going to be negative 19 times by T, um, which is in this case going to be 4 plus a half times by the acceleration of 9 comma 8 times by 4 squared. And am I right that it is 4? Yes, it is. So if we pop that in a calculator again, I'm just checking that I did actually get this right. It's going to be 19 times 4 which is minus 76. That's minus 76 plus, and that there is 4.9 times 16 equals 78,4. So therefore, that is definitely, definitely, definitely 2,4. Right. So delta x is 2,4. So we now know that that height there is 2,4 meters. Now we can use that. We can say delta x is 2,4 is equal to vi0, but we've got a half times 9,8 times. Sorry, I'm just thinking about the fact that it's positive it's right. Times by 4 minus t all squared. So therefore, do you agree that that becomes 2 comma 4 is equal to 4 comma 9, 16 minus 8t plus t squared. Um, let's do it a bit differently. Let's multiply this out. So therefore, we can say 4.9 times 16 is equal to 78.4. So this equals 78,4 minus 4.9 times 8 is equal to 39, 2t plus 4,9t squared, and then we subtract 2.4. So we end up with 4,9t squared minus 39,2t, and then minus um, plus, sorry, 78.4 minus 2.4 is just 76. Okay, and now we can use our formula again. So we go T is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of 
b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So therefore we can say it is 39, 2 plus or minus the square root of 39.2 squared minus 4 times by a, which is 4, 9 times by c, which is 76. Okay, so let's try that now. So if we do that, we've got 39.2 squared minus, I just want to check my signs, yeah, I'm right, um, bracket 4 times 4.9 times 76 close bracket equals so that there is 47.04 and if we square root the answer we get 6.85 this is all over 2a okay? so therefore this is going to be 39 comma 2 plus or minus 6 comma what did we say 86 Eight six over nine comma eight. So let us do that. So if we add that, so we're going to go thirty nine point two plus six point eight six equals, and then we divide it by nine point eight equals. And we end up with 4.7. So that's over there somewhere. So it can't be that. So now we need to subtract. So we're going to go 39.2 minus 6, 86 equals divided by 9.8 equals. And that's 3.3. And that's much better. So T is three comma three seconds. Whew. Okay, fine. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong there. I think I just did a mathematical error right at the bottom. Okay, right. So now we know that the time was 3.3. Then it says, so we've done that. Count that the time taken for the stone to reach maximum height. Okay, so that's fairly easy to do because you know the initial velocity is minus 19 meters per second. You know the acceleration is 9.8. The time is no longer four seconds. That's what you're working out. But you know the final velocity is what at its maximum height. I'm sure that you know the final velocity at its maximum height is zero. So um, therefore we can say VF equals zero. So then to work out the time, we just go VF is equal to vi plus a delta t. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is negative 19 plus acceleration of 9 comma 8 t. Therefore, it's going to be 19 divided by 9 comma 8 is equal to t, which means that t is equal to what? So it's 19 divided by 9.8 8 equals 1.94 seconds, 1,94 seconds. So that there is at 1,94 seconds. Okay, now it says, which stone strikes the ground with a higher velocity? And the answer is neither. And the reason for this is that even though A is thrown upwards and B is dropped, the only force of acceleration acting on them, excuse me, is the force of gravity. They don't mention anything about friction. Okay, so therefore, from this height over here, now let me just get a different color so you can see what I'm doing. Where is it? From this point onwards, they are both dropped from the same height. Okay, and for that reason, that the acceleration He's going to be accelerating them both downwards with I'm actually wrong and I'll tell you why I'm wrong. Sorry, 
this one has got an initial velocity of zero and it is being accelerated over the same displacement same displacement okay with the same acceleration but its initial velocity is zero this dude okay the a ball when it gets to this height here it's got a velocity of 19 meters per second already downwards. Now it's been accelerated with 9.8 meters per second. So therefore the correct answer is A, I apologize. Now it says sketch velocity versus time graph for both stones on the same sets of axes. Okay, so I need to erase some stuff so I space. And what does it say? It says use the letter A to label the graph of stone A and the letter B to graph stone B. Okay, indicate the following on the graph. Okay, the initial velocity of stone A, the time when stone B is dropped, the time taken for stone A to reach its maximum height. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so first of all, we have a velocity versus time graph, which means it's a vector graph, which means it should have positives and negatives. So this is the velocity versus time graph. This is in seconds and this is meters per second. We chose up, no, we chose down as positive. So A is originally going to be starting with a negative velocity of minus 19 and it's going to travel at a constant rate until it hits the ground at this point here at four seconds. This point here is where it reaches its maximum height and that's going to be 1 comma 9, 4, 9, 4 seconds. Okay, so that is the initial velocity of A is minus 19. Now, the time when stone B is dropped is 3.3 seconds and it is traveling in parallel to um, the A, okay? So it's parallel because it's got the same acceleration and it says the time taken for stone A to reach its maximum height and the time I've done it, all done, all done. Right, so as soon as I see a bullet block, I just know, I just know it's going to be momentum. Okay, momentum and kinetic energy. The two of them together make up a bullet block system question. Okay, so let's have a look, see what they've got. It says the diagram below shows a bullet of mass M1 strikes a block of mass M2 lying stationary on a horizontal frictionless surface. The bullet strikes the block with a velocity of 300 meters per second, passes through the block and emerges from the block with a velocity of 120. The block itself moves 1,8 meters per second in the original direction of the bullet. Okay, so it's observed the kinetic energy of the bullet block system decreases by 752,76 joules, which we kind of expect, okay, because the bullet has slowed down, there's going to be some friction going on here, so we're expecting there to be a loss in kinetic energy. It says, is the collision between the bullets and the block elastic or inelastic? And the correct answer is it's inelastic, and the reason for that, uh, that is because it is a last its kinetic energy, it's lost its kinetic energy. Now it says, use the principle of conservation of linear momentum and calculate the mass of the block in terms of the mass of the bullet. Hmm, in terms of the mass of the bullet. Okay, so we've got P before equals P after. Do you agree? So this block here is stationary initially, but let's just write it out. We've got mass of the bullet Okay, initial velocity of the bullet plus mass of the block, initial velocity of the block is equal to mass of the bullet, final velocity of the bullet plus mass of the block, final velocity of the block. Okay, right. So the mass of the bullet, we don't know, we're going to call it M1. The initial velocity is 300, right? This is zero, so it doesn't count. It's equal to the mass of the bullet, bullet still 300, um, mass one, but now its speed is 120 
plus the mass of the block, M2, mass of the block, times by uh, 1,8. It's still going in the same direction. Okay. So now, do you see what it says? It says, use the principle of conservation, then you have to calculate the mass of block in terms of the mass of block. So we're solving for M2. So we can say 300 M1 minus 120 M1 is equal to 1,8 M2, right? So do you agree that we've got 80 M1 is equal to 1,8 M2. So therefore M2 is equal to 80 M1 divided by 1,8. And let's just make that nice. So we're going to go 80 divided by 1.8 equals 44.44. So it's 44 comma 44 m1 equals m2 okay so m2 is equal to 44 comma 44 m1 okay done now it says calculate the mass of the block in kilograms okay but they do tell us that the energy of the system has decreased by 752 comma 76 joules okay so if we look at that do you agree we can say that ek before equals ek after plus your 752 comma 76 joules okay so therefore you could say delta ek is 752 comma 76 joules but delta EK is equal to what? What is the change in kinetic energy equal to? Um, do you agree that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work done? Okay, it's equal to the work done. Um, but we don't know how far the block has moved, so we can't use that. Oh man, I'm being an idiot. But we know that EK is equal to a half MV squared. Squared. Okay. Um, or we can say that the EK is equal to a half M um, V delta V all squared. Okay, delta V all squared. And it says that it's observed the kinetic energy of the bullet block system decreases by 752.76 joules. Okay, so do you agree that we can say, well, it's pretty obvious that we are looking at Um, we are looking using the mass of the bullet for this. So we can say the change in kinetic energy is to do, the loss in kinetic energy is to do with the loss in um, kinetic energy of the bullet. Okay, so we can say that that is going to be um, M1 times is times by a half. And then the change of velocity is going to be 300 minus 120, which is 180 squared, is going to be 752,76 joules. So do you agree we could multiply this by 2 and divide it by the 180 squared and we'll get M1. Okay, so let's do that. So we can go 752, no, let's try again, 752, hmm, sorry, just a second, um, I just want to correct this. The change in kinetic energy is equal to the delta EK is equal to the sum of the delta K of the block plus the delta K of the bullet. 
right? Which is a half times the mass of the block, which we don't know, it's M2, times by its change in velocity, which is going to be 1,8 squared, plus a half times the mass of the bullet, which is M1, times by the change in its velocity, which is 300 minus 120 squared. And that is going to equal to 752,76. That's better. But now we know that 44,414 M1 is equal to M2. Okay. So now what we can do is we can erase all this. 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 Okay. And then we can solve for this. We can say 752,76 is equal to a half times by 44.44 M1 times by 1,8 squared plus a half M1 times by 180 squared. Okay, so do you agree I can take out an M1 and I'm left with 752,76 is equal to M1 a half times by 44,44 times by 1,8 squared plus a half times by 180 squared, close brackets. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So this is going to, oh, sorry, let's try again. And I closed the calculator, didn't I? So let's just open it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got 0 0.5 multiplied by 44. 0.44 multiplied by 1.8, 1.8 squared. Um, and then plus 0 0.5 multiplied by, oops, no, delete, um, bracket, 180 bracket squared equals. So that's 1,627,99. I'm sorry, I need to craft just a second. So therefore we've got 752,76 is equal to 1,671,99. So we can divide by 752.76. 7, 6 equals, and then we have to invert it. So we press the invert button, and then we press SD. So the mass of the bullet is 0, 0, 4, 6. The mass of the bullet, M1, is 0, 0, 4, 6 kilograms, which we expected. The mass of the block is 44.44 times that, so let's just multiply that by 44.44, which equals 2,06. So it's 2,06 kilograms, which are doable numbers. Okay, that makes sense. Huh, whew, nice question. Okay, we only have six minutes. Let's see if we can do this quickly. Okay, it says a car of mass 1,500 kilograms needs to maintain a constant speed of 10 meters per second up a constant hill of height 4.56 meters and climbed at an angle of 0, 0,46 degrees. I'm wondering if that's a mistake because 0, 0.46 is not very big. 
and they're showing it to be quite big. Anyway, the coefficient of the kinetic friction mu k. Oh, you know what? I think that's a mistake. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, it says the traffic official is stationary to the side on the side of the road when the speed limit is set at 100 kilometers an hour. Um, yeah, that's wrong. It's kilometers per hour. He hears the hoot of a car that is traveling at a constant velocity. The hoot emits sound waves of frequency 433.64 hertz. The wavelength of sound detected by the traffic traffic officials 0.72. The speed of sound is 340. State Doppler effect in words. Okay, you need to say it's apparent shift in frequency due to relative motion between observer and the source. Then it says calculate the frequency. So we know that C is equal to lambda frequency and we've got the wavelength. So therefore we can say frequency is equal to C over lambda, which is three times by 10 to the eight over the wavelength, which they told us, which is 0, 0,72. So let's work out what that frequency is. So it's gonna be three exponent eight divided by 0, 0,72 equals okay so now it's going to be one two three four five six seven eight so it's four point one seven four comma one seven times by ten to the eight hertz sure that's quite fast let me just check this the wavelength of the sound detected by the travel efficient is 0 0.7 meters we know that C is equal to lambda F. I'm right about that. Um, we also know that it says wavelength of sound detected by the is 0.72 meters. I just can't believe that there's something wrong with this. Okay, it says the hoot emits sound of frequency at 433,64 hertz. Okay, then it says the wavelength of sound detected by the traffic is 0, 0,70 meters, and the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. Okay, so if we use our wave equation, we see is equal to lambda f, we see is 3 times by 10 to the 8, and your wavelength is 0, 0,72 then it does make sense that you would get a number like 4,17 times by 10 to the 8 as a frequency. But quite candidly, that means that this thing is traveling very close to the speed of light. Um, yeah. Oh, that's why. It's the speed of sound, not light. So therefore, sorry. So therefore, um, it says the wavelength of sound. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Let's try again. Okay, it says the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. So that's a bit better. So let us do this. So we're going to go V is equal to lambda F. So it's 340 is equal to the wavelength of 0, 0,72 multiplied by the frequency. The frequency is going to be 340 divided by 0, 0,72. So therefore, this is 340 divided by 0 0.72 equals SC button 472.22, that's better, 472,22 hertz. And since the frequency is higher than the source of the frequency, it means that it's coming towards you. It's coming towards you. And the reason, because the source, the frequency that you're observing is higher than the source of frequency. Okay, grade 12, I'm afraid that's it for today. I can't go any further. We've run out of time. Please go study hard. Do not panic. Learn your definitions. Um, 
yeah, make sure that you know your definitions because they're going to ask it and it works out to be about 10% of the paper. So it's really silly not to learn it. Okay, good luck. Cheers.